we get to do is make the bones speak. It's really an unknown group of people. We get to learn how old are these people? Um, are they males or females? What kind of trauma are they experiencing? What kind of diets do they have? So that whole learning more and more about Nubia and just the lack of information that there is uh, really got me excited about the collection. The preservation, especially of the children, is outstanding. That's a really unique opportunity to have all a big sample of children's bones that are excellently preserved really gives us a snapshot into the life of these individuals at the time. In 2009, they were building something called the Meroway Dam. The dam, which is now completed, has flooded a large portion, large region of the Nile River, covering thousands of years of archaeological history. In 2007, Four of our graduate students worked on the British Museum archaeological team, specifically excavating two medieval cemeteries. The role our students played in this project was a very important one. They were the human bone experts. They were very integral in excavating over 400 human skeletons at the site. What we have here is um, one of the adult individuals of the collection, um, which uh, is a really great example of how we can kind of tell how old someone is and if they're male or female. Having this human skeletal collection at MSU is a big thing. It provides our graduate students, who I feel are the best in the country, with amazing research opportunities. I was looking at the health of the individuals. So this is an example of something that we call osteomyelitis. And it's essentially an infection of the bone. Here's an example of the infected bone, and here's an example of a normal bone. And this is an a very advanced case of the disease. Um, the person probably had it for a pretty long period of time. There's a lot of bone growth around it, which indicates that it's trying to heal. It appears that this is a relatively stressed population, but the fact that we're seeing so many diseases, scurvy, tuberculosis, leprosy, nutritional deficiencies, that's an indication that they were fighting off a lot of pathogens. Life must have been difficult for these individuals, and we can see that in the skeletal remains. Our undergraduates have been involved in all phases of the project. When I came in, I had no experience with bones. And so working here, I've gotten extensive experience that I wouldn't be able to get in a classroom. We're not just observing, but we're actually working with the remains. When we're doing things like applying for graduate schools, that's something that will really catch attention. Undergrads don't usually get that opportunity. There aren't a lot of programs from across the world that have collections uh, like this. It's just so neat to see a physical remain of something that is thousands of years old or, you know, or even, even if it was just a couple hundred, like it's still the idea that something from so long ago is sitting right here in front of me and I'm able to kind of tell something about that person from it. As cliche as it is, it's where like history comes alive. <laughs>